Hey, I found a great soul winning website that has the proper um, definition of repentance to, for salvation, um, which we know is not to turn from sin because that's a work of righteousness. To turn from sin is to turn from breaking God's law or to keep God's law. Um, if you had to stop doing that sin in order to receive salvation, um, that would mean you'd have to turn from all your sins and no one becomes sinless in this life. We can grow in his grace and get better and better in our walk with him once we're reborn of God. Now, I once did a video called uh, Satan's Trick of Living the Christian Life Without Being Born Again. And that is because they have a false plan of salvation, the wrong repentance, to turn from your wicked ways. But the gospel is not a call to change your life. It's to, it's to turn toward the cross in faith, to turn toward the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus with childlike faith, trust, and reliance upon what he did to save you to redeem you to the Father. Now, these people do not believe the gospel. They don't. Because believing the gospel means that you believe that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is what quenched God's wrath and now has opened the way for you to be in fellowship with God the Father and that you're no longer under his wrath. Okay, let me read you what this site says. It's wonderful. The, um, the Word on the Word of Faith info blog, the Repent of Your Sin Heresy in the Word of Faith Church. All right? All right, he does correctly define it uh, as a change of mind as God repented over 38 times in the Bible. And also <clears throat> to turn toward God with faith or to turn away from something like God repented of his anger. He turned from that. All right, um, now nowhere does it say of your sins for salvation. Nowhere at all. That's the Catholic dogma that has infiltrated the church. The narrow straight gate is grace alone through faith alone. In Christ alone, we know that adding our works makes us outside of faith. Christ is of none effect. Um, the reward's no longer reckoned of grace, but of debt. Uh, if his works is works, his grace is grace. We mix the two, we're, we're messed up. Okay, we're not having the true gospel, and it's not the simplicity that's in Christ. And it's no longer good news, but it's causing a lot of people pain and fear and sending them to hell. All right, uh, these scriptures show us in action what repentance is the first one shows us that god says turning from evil ways is a work of course it's a work it's of yourselves doing something or not doing something is a work come on so turning from sin cannot be a salvific requirement since we're not saved by works uh jonah and god saw their works that they turned from their evil way and god repented of the evil that he said he'd do unto them and he did it not see he repented of uh punishing them um, God has no sin to turn from or repent of, but you see, he had a change of mind and didn't do what he had previously said he would do. Matthew 21, 32. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed not. But the publicans and the harlot believed him, and then when they had, ye had seen it, repented not afterward that you might believe him. See? You didn't change your mind and believe John even after you saw that the publicans and harlots were receiving the truth. And John's baptism of repentance was to say, believe on the one who comes after me. And we're told that in the New Testament. That's what the baptism of repentance was. To turn toward this truth that the Messiah was here and he was coming after John. He was a voice crying in the wilderness mentioned in the Old Testament. It might be Isaiah. All right, Acts 19.4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized, baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. See, they were turning toward this truth, that Christ Jesus is the Messiah. All right, Acts 20, 21. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and a faith toward our Lord Jesus. So turning towards God, all right? That's what that means. Hmm. Mark 1.15 and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Okay? Turn toward this truth. What? Change your mind. Believe on the gospel. You don't add to God's word. You don't put of your sins. Because you can repent of having a sandwich and have a salad. You can repent of buying a Toyota and buy a Ford. Alright? You can repent of anything. All four of these verses use the same Greek word with the same meaning of having a change of mind. We are to change our mind to believe the gospel and go from unbelief to believing and have complete faith in what Christ did. Also, we are to repent and have a change of mind about our works. We must consider them dead. As Paul said, let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. 
Why? Because the Jews were going back to Levitical law, trying not to steal, kill, lie, keep the law, not sin, and offer animal sacrifices. So he tells them to turn from those dead works. Quit putting your faith in your ability to not sin and believe on the finished work of Christ, okay? That's why I'm so against this. And you'll notice the people that come here and attack us, hatred, self-righteous hatred, because they have no grounds. When you show them scripturally, it's completely false, and it's out of context. They, they lose their minds, and they start insulting us. And you see the real fruit of that spirit there. All right, <laughs> Hebrews, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of Christ is his death, burial, and resurrection alone redeems us to the Father, justifies us, declares us righteous, because God puts his righteousness on us when we simply trust in Christ and we're born of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit promise the moment we trust in it. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith towards God. All right? Hebrews 9.14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? See, you shouldn't be conscious of what you've got to do anymore, your dead works, to be all right with God. Because his one-time sacrifice took care of all that. And when you rest in that, you're free from the bondage. You've entered into his rest. You've ceased from all your works. All these are biblical instructions to us people. The same Greek word is used in the first verse. It means we are to have a change of mind about the salvific value of our works. We must consider them dead and ineffectual. Let's look at some more passages. Acts 17, 30. And at the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands men everywhere to repent. I've done a whole video on this. Paul was telling the Athenians, stop believing in your idols and turn to Christ alone to save you. He's saying their ignorance of worshiping false gods, God winked at that, but now he commands people to repent of what they're putting their faith in. Well, idolatry is a sin, so you do have to turn from sin. No, it's whatever you're putting your faith in that you have to turn from and turn toward the truth of the living God. All right? All right. Now, Acts 2.36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said, said to Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Again, they were to change their mind about crucifying the Lord. See, they were heartbroken. What shall we do? We crucified the Lord of glory. Repent of that and believe on him now. Okay, do you get it? All right, therefore we can see that repentance does not mean to turn from sin. Biblical repentance and faith are one and the same. This does not mean, however, that Christians turn grace into a license to sin. Once we become born again by faith, we then begin the process of walking with the Lord, growing in his grace. You'll see um, progress in our walk because we're no longer in fear. And now we're like, wow, we did nothing to deserve this. His spirit lives in us now. And we want to live for him. But until you get the true gospel and the real revelation that there's nothing good in you people, there's none righteous, you you could change all the behavior you want, but Jesus came to save you from your sin nature. Your very flesh is sin. You can't repent of you, sweetheart. You've got to simply trust in the cross and you'll get a brand new person in you. You'll be born of God. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, they looked at that with faith and were saved from their death. We look at Christ on the cross with faith and are saved from the second death. All right? And you'll see, you'll have these bondages of sin that, that you struggle with come off, and it takes time sometimes. This is our walk. This is our growing in his grace. But you can't get there until you had the revelation that there's nothing good you can offer God except complete trust Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You're believing on him. You're trusting him as Savior. Believing the gospel that his death, burial, and resurrection justified you. But they don't believe it. They believe it in vain because they haven't really believed the gospel. You see? That's why I'm so heartbroken. They asked Jesus, when you come back, will you find faith? He was like, no. Not would you find people living right, but would you find faith? And, and there is none. The church is apostate. 
it's word of faith or it's Joel Osteen's uh, self-help garbage that any psychiatrist could have come up with. Or you have, you know, not the redemptive work about you're wretched, God's perfect and holy, but he loves you so much he laid his life down. You're on your way to hell, but this is how you get out of it. Trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's what every church foundation should be. Every sermon, every week, every Wednesday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Saturday if you're in a messianic church, should be preaching the gospel every message. Somebody that's visiting the church should know how to be saved by the time they leave that place. And it's been lost. The first works, people, go back to the first works. That is the first works. All right? God bless you guys.